girl got the girl. <laughs> Pose. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I tried to be done laughing by the time this started. I trying to gather myself too. Hello. Uh, we thought we went live and we did not go live. I <laughs> and it took what felt like at least a minute, maybe two minutes of talking. It did. We're not live. Uh, we were. We are now live. Uh, <laughs> I was like sitting there we talking. It was like no one's talking back to us. Emily's mid sentence, and then I'm like, "We're not live." <laughs> and because, sorry. and then you started the countdown again, and I was like motioning, like press the button. I know, and I forgot again. To press the button. I really did almost forget to push the button again. It's like, I got confused. Listen, don't look at me. Don't look at me. All right. Welcome everyone to the live stream. I was able to pin a comment. So I feel like a bad bitch right there. I said that when I thought we were live. I'm saying it again. Now that we are live. A nerdy bad bitch, which is like the best pit ultimate state of being in my book. I also have the instant regret that I have every time I do this, where I do my makeup, don't have time to take photos, and instantly I'm like, I'm going to cry laugh this makeup off, damn it. <laughs> but that's okay, because cry laugh is, is better than just crying. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> Well, welcome everyone. I'm Audra. This is my dear friend, Emily. Hello. We are hanging out today to talk about a fairly heavy subject. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone who is here live. And those of you who couldn't make it live, uh, that is okay. If you're watching on the replay, greatly appreciate you. I know it's not always easy to watch a live stream on replay. Excuse the belching. Okay. Also, all of y'all lurkers, you're fine to lurk. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. But if you do, we welcome you. A yes. uh, huge yes. shout out to the mods. Thank you. And a huge, huge shout out to both mine and Emily's Patreon members and channel members. Guess what, y'all? I did it. <laughs> you did what? After this live stream, a new Patreon exclusive video is going up. It is edited. Amazing. <laughs> it is ready to go. Um, I also put up a little Patreon, a little update on my Patreon today. If anybody is curious to hear how my life has been, but it's not <laughs> edited. It's just eight minutes of me of me talking. But it's a it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So um, there wasn't a lot of editing. It's just me cutting out me being like, Bo, stop it. So <laughs> <laughs> Audra does edit very fast. As somebody <laughs> that put up a video today after editing it in the morning, I'm like, I, I knew I didn't work at Audra speed, but I definitely know it. Hey, uh, is it Angie? I believe Angie. it is Angie. We're going to say some quick hellos. Jennifer, yes. hi. Hello, everyone. I'm just popping some names up here because my goofy ass just, I cannot believe I, we were sitting there talking. And, just like, and we are not live. I'm so sorry. Hello, everyone. Right. Right. Sharon, hello. Feffy is in the house. I have cramps. And <laughs> Rick Hal is here. Hi, how are you? Jade is here. Hello. Hello, Erica, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So welcome everyone. Welcome Cecily. Welcome Jeff. There's so many of y'all. Like I like, oh, hey, it's Patrick. Hey, Patrick. How are you? Welcome. Okay. So like anybody I haven't said hello. I see hello a couple of Emily. new. I see another Emily and an hey. Arad or Dara. And I feel like Gabby, well, first of all, hi, Gabby. And Gabby mentioned the great point. Please be respectful and mindful for this chat because we, we this is something we said when we weren't live. We're going to try to bring as much levity to this conversation as we can, but it is yeah. a fairly serious conversation. It's something that kind of was stumbled upon how intensely impactful the topic is. Uh, so that's a good point. Uh, take yes. care of yourself. We love having everyone here, whether it's live or on the replay, having everyone talking in, in the comments, but don't, don't overextend what you can handle. 
Yes, I completely understand if this isn't like something that everybody wants to revisit. And so I am going to start by saying, I stumbled upon this by accident. So TikTok, uh, for those of you that don't know, I do ADHD TikTok, like ADHD content on TikTok. I talk about my struggles with ADHD, my struggles with neurodivergency, and that's what I talk about over there. So... Uh, what happened was yesterday I did a TikTok live, which I typically don't do because it gives me flop sweats. Every time I try to go live on TikTok, I get nervous. I'm there for approximately 45 seconds before I stress out and go, no one's coming. And then I leave immediately. Uh, so, it, so I didn't live. even <laughs> realize this originally was stumbled across in a live. It was a live <laughs> I missed and y'all know I try to be everywhere. Anyway, uh, I yeah. agree with Cecily. Audra does some as excellent TikTok content <laughs> related to neurodivergency and other things. If you're on TikTok, you should you should find Audra at home over there. <laughs> but continue your story because I'm cutting you off. <laughs> well, no, no. The thing was, I th I thought that I would use TikTok to help me, like the TikTok lives, to help me do like my 30 minutes of cleaning a day or so, right? Oh. And then I get off the live, and I just I suddenly had this thought, and so here I'll share the TikTok with y'all. Like, I'm just going to go ahead and play it because I may as well. Um, I don't know how well you, uh, you may just have to listen to it and you can watch it. I, it's not a big deal. I'm just trying to share it with you so that you can hear what I had to say about the situation. So here it is. Okay, so hear me out, but did you ever think that perhaps our relationship with cleaning, if you are in my age group, or who knows, you might be younger, but did you ever stop to think that our relationship with cleaning stems from the fact that we used to like binge clean as children? Like, if you were woken up by a parent playing music and like on Sunday that meant that you had to get up and it was going to be two to three hours sometimes four hours but just cleaning your home and maybe that's why we got it in our heads a long time ago that like it's either you clean the whole house or you don't clean it at all anyone <laughs> so that was the TikTok <laughs> um I also just dropped in a comment. So I had the link to the direct TikTok that you just played. <laughs> so if you're on there and you want to go, you know, like the TikTok, follow, all that stuff. Anyway, okay. Thorn. <laughs> like, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Yeah. Oh. The, the damn, <laughs> I have feelings every Sunday. So because TikTok has been overwhelming for Audra, I have been kind of, I mean, I think you've been in and out, but like last I looked, which was like four or five hours ago, it had over a thousand comments. Comments. Holy shit, really? Yes. I mean, that includes you replying, but like it had last night when we were talking around like midnight, 11, it had like 300, 400 comments. And over the the last day, it's gotten another 600 comments. Yeah, and I ducked and hid from the whole thing. I was like, oh! <laughs> and a lot of views. I won't say that number because I know that number is probably going to scare you again. And I don't, even <laughs> though I will like never go back to the TikTok. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, the the more that we talked last night, it, it was like, oh, we, we should do a, a live about this. Like, uh, because of these comments. Yeah. This is the thing that really hit home for me because of the amount of people who had comments like this and like alleys. Ooh, that hit me in the feels so hard. Fefe with the oh, my, OMG Audra. That's the reason I have a weird ass relationship with cleaning. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this one like that. Yes. I think that's why I hate cleaning as an adult. My mom yes. clean as punishments when I was a kid, people talking about the complications of cleaning it, like more people saying things like this. I either clean my house or like the entire house or nothing. Yes. And that's when like, I came to this awkward realization that there's just like this trauma that many of us and I hate I don't like to use the word because I don't want it to be overused but it is like a bit of a trauma that like follows us through adulthood because as I was explaining to Emily I said here's the thing I don't think many of us are ever really equipped with 
how to clean. We just know we have to clean. And yes. you know, the binge clean thing that you do once a week, you grew up doing. And then you go to college and you establish that same thing. Everybody's used to doing it. Like th this is the thing that you think about. Everybody in your dorm is used to this. So you all work out what day it's going to be in college. I think we did Saturday daytime because we were all going to go, you know, get drunk on Saturday evening yeah. and we don't, we didn't want to do it on Sunday. So we did it again, you know, when we moved into another house of people and then you live by yourself. <laughs> And then that's where the nightmare begins with your like ability to clean. At least it did for me. Like I had such difficulties because I lived by myself and I was just like, I don't, uh, do I still clean weekly? I mean, nobody's going to yell at me, I guess. Do I have to like, <laughs> and the other layer of that, that I think instantly starts as you get into what is a, whatever adulthood is by the time you're living alone or whatever, you're probably working a 40, 50, 60 hour week, working five days a week. So you have two days off. I mean, it's just, do you as a kid you have two days off too yes but as an adult you're like i have to devote a whole day to like i because even if it doesn't take you a whole day to clean your house let's say you're like i have to go get groceries and do this and do that and clean that's half of your days off just gone yeah and it's it's like but why would I do that? Like, why? Because there's also no longer the punishment of if I yes. don't do it, you know, my mom's going to come in with the radio blaring the song or I'm going to get more punishment or I'm going to have to do this or that because it's worse or like, like you can ignore it now. Yeah. And it's like, oh, so what happens if I ignore it? Well, nothing. Your just apartment gets dirtier. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's such a weird feeling because you're like, nothing, nothing does happen. And yeah. then you have to start like, for me, it was like establishing what I thought of as clean. Like that became yes. a thing. Like what, what do I think is clean? Do I think that everything needs to be dusted and every surface needs to be like windexed? Do I think that that is a, like, do I have to clean my windows? Do I have to wash all the mirrors? Like, is that what I think is clean or is that what like was passed down? And you know, when I thought about it, because I feel like a lot of people at some, it's to some degree, we, we want to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe my parents did this to me. But we also have to think like, we were moving, if you're near my age, older and younger, we like my age, we were starting to move towards more and more of both parents having to work or a single parent household. Yeah. And with that being the case, the ability to like truly clean, you know, every day, pick up every day, just started to lose its luster because the kids usually have activities after school. And so you learn like you can't just leave big shit around, right? Like you yeah. can't just drop your backpack on the floor and like walk off. But like, what about those four pens you put on the, you know, coffee table? Like nobody yeah. cares about those pens. They care about yeah. your backpack. So you're not really like, like, you know how to clean in the sense of, you know, you get this rag and you clean this. Yeah. But like, what is your standard of clean? And where did you get it from? And, and like, how and do does you it actually <laughs> matter to you? Like dusting versus versus mopping versus like, it's like, okay, if I don't act or like the windows, like there are certain things that as they grow or as you live, you might think, you know what? I need to do this once every six months or once yeah. a year. I don't need to do this once a week or once a month. And that can also create tension when you have roommates because different people can have different levels of what they think is clean versus not clean too. And neither yeah. of you can be wrong, but it can make, like for somebody that is like to an, a, a more extreme person, it can be frustrating because you're like, well, our, all, we're all cleaning together, but like you're not doing your part. And it's like, but this, this is what I, this is my standard of 
a queen. And like, yes. it, but I just, I think, I think there's like so much, I just like, I see so much happening in the chat and I like, I want to, I want to highlight every comment, but it's just like, there's this, uh, it's it's a lot and yeah every everyone's everyone is molded by their family and it's yes. hard to shake it even if you know it's too much that's a really good point this is a comment from michael where yeah. like and that's why i do consider in some degree this to be like and i don't even need to use the word legitimate but like legitimate trauma because there's a lot of us that are neurodivergent and that's the other big part. That's yes. where, to me, the trauma lies. Because we have all of these things that we were raised on that were the standards expected of us that, for better or worse, we had to do. But now we're older. We have fewer physical spoons, fewer mental spoons. If you don't know the spoon theory, that's what I'm referencing. But basically, we have some of us have different levels of energy different needs. Gabby and a couple of people mentioned if their space is a mess, it affects their mental health. They're worse off. Mm -hmm. For a lot of us, like if you are dealing with depression or anxiety or other things, you also don't have the energy or the focus. If you have ADHD, you might not have the focus to clean. So it's like all intertwined and you're like, Okay, this is just cleaning, but yeah, as we it's found out, it, I like <laughs> unlocked this whole conversation where it's just like, why? Like when everyone is like, ad why is adulting so hard? Because probably most people saying that, at least in my life, most people that are saying that are neurodivergent. They're not yeah. neurotypical. So that's like the other huge layer to the conversation. Yeah, and please don't add compulsions to that because the, yeah. the when you have people who um have compulsions on top then that makes their relationship with cleaning even more difficult right because yeah. if they know that their house has to be clean top to bottom all day every day and and then they have very specific compulsions on like items that must be like has to be done this can really just be very difficult for them and then you add to that that just the adult part of like learning to, cause you live by yourself and then we all have different standards of clean anyway when we move in with other people, right? But then you add the relationship dynamic in a, a, a non platonic way, mm -hmm. you are having a relationship and then you are both looking at each other like this isn't clean. <laughs> like both of you, like this isn't clean. You're like, no, this isn't clean. No, no, mine's clean, yours isn't clean. Yeah. It, I look at it as like the chicken wing effect where you argue with people over whether or not they got all the meat off the bone. You know what I mean? And it's like, to them, they felt like they got all the meat off the bone, but you look at it and you're like, there is still meat. Cause we're you did people, not clean it off. They don't want to, they don't, they don't find it savory to, to get that close to the bone. Mm -hmm. And for other people, that's like the most delicious part. Yes. Kind of thing. As, as somebody that does tend to clean things off the bone when I, it, it is Same. not, it's like, it's how I was raised. It was how I was like, that's like, th there's all these other layers to it. But again, childhood, it all kind of filters back to that. And Rena put it so well. Oh, hi, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Basically, it's a cycle, especially if you deal with depression, mm -hmm. where, or other things where, you know, you not having a clean space makes can make the depression worse can heighten it but then the more the worse you feel the harder it is to get up and start the easier it is to be overwhelmed and that yeah. also ties in with the all or nothing of it all because once you're overwhelmed it's like well what's the point of cleaning a corner if i still am surrounded by the rest of the space that needs cleaning or arranging or whatever and it's like, that's that's why it's toxic. Yeah, because I do believe, I think it was Michael that said this, but like, we do need to normalize cleaning a little bit at a time. Yeah. Like, like you don't, you don't have to have the whole house spotless. And yeah, I, as I started to, because the thing is, when I realized that, like when I lived by myself, you know, I got married and I forgot, and we had different, 
different standards of clean. And what was actually really horrible about our marriage with, with respects to cleaning is he did this same thing. Like he would say, let's take a nap. And we'll clean afterwards. And sometimes I didn't fall asleep at the same time as he did. Sometimes it was like yeah. a good 45 minutes after he fell asleep that I fell asleep. But when he was ready to clean, he did the same thing. The rude Ugh. awakening would Ugh. just start playing music, start the vacuum. And I was like, could you not let... Like if we need to <sighs> clean together, and I am still asleep. The first thing you do doesn't have to be the vacuum. You can go clean the bathroom or go clean the another room where we're not like you don't there. It's just there's there's such a level of disrespect. And yes. I think about this a lot. Looking back at childhood and looking at how we treat children, both how we that are adults now have been treated and how current parents and and authority figures treat kids and all the all the in-betweens where i'm just like so often i look at it and i'm like there is such a level of disrespect yeah and it's not it's not like i'm not talking about like abuse i'm not talking about that extreme i'm talking about these events that create this trauma cycle that create these memories that are painful and you're like, just because you're not an adult doesn't mean you don't deserve the respect of like being woken up without having a, something blaring in your ears or being concerned that if you don't get up at a certain time and start, you're going to get the belt or all these different like these effects or these these punishments to just yeah. existing. Yeah, because I feel like. I mean, it's, it's children, I think for a very long time, we somewhere in society decided that this little person that you created, you now have dominion over and complete ownership. And it's not right because yeah. this is like, this is why I think a lot of people even have difficulties with boundaries because your entire life, yes, your parent is there to mold and help you like grow and raise you and all of these things. But for the majority of your life, you aren't given respect. Yeah. You, and you are always, you're constantly taught that you must respect everybody else, but no one has to respect you. And I think that this is where a lot of people fall into that passive aggressive pattern, all of this kind of stuff, because you feel like you have to respect everybody else, but no respect is given you. So when it comes to cleaning, yeah. the way in which many of us were rudely awakened to music and loud splashing. And so many people commented about vacuums being banged against their door. There were other people who oh. worse had parents, you know, get like pulling them out of the bed or throwing water on them. Like it was a whole ordeal. And I'm just like, y'all really couldn't just honestly say, hey, we're gonna get up and clean at 7 a.m., set your alarm, and then everybody come in. And exactly. like, then, then that way I could have like been like, okay, and made better choices, especially like, as you get older. Just like, like how you have these habits that you have to form with school. And not everyone is great at it from being a child to an adult. But if you're like, okay, Friday night, it's dinner, whatever, after dinner, it's a text, whatever, hey, cleaning Saturday morning, reminding you, I, you know, I'm starting at eight, you should be in doing here, it's doing shit by nine, like whatever, however you put it, to give some structure without it being, without it feeling so much like punishment. Like for yeah. me, I didn't really have the music blaring part of it, but I have a, have a hard relationship with cleaning a weird relationship because it definitely felt like punishment. And I also, had a very traditional family in terms of it was my mom and me. I was the only daughter. The two women, the two, you know, were the ones that cleaned every Saturday. My brothers, like they were younger, they didn't, oh, uh, 
Defective Shark says, out of curiosity, did anyone else have problems with parents cleaning their rooms by throwing things away without permission? I think I also saw a comment from you, if I'm incorrect, I could be wrong, earlier talking about like the experience of like you and your like a parent being in your room, like have with a trash bag, just holding things up, being like, are you going to clean or am I going to throw it away? Yes. Like, again, this is that, that disrespect of it all. And... The, the interesting thing with TikTok, too, to go to talk about this comment is seeing and learning more and more about ADHD and how mess is different for everyone. And yep. something that can, and the same for with me, like something can look chaotic, but it's not actually messy or there's undiagnosed things happening there. And rather than again crossing boundaries and just like cleaning shit up for the child or throwing things away or or forcing them to do things you could ask like or you could say like make sure you have no dirty dishes no trash but if it's just piles I don't understand and yes if it's not clean you're automatically lazy that part of it yeah because like if you were to come in my home, which I like, <laughs> like Maisha said, I don't let people come in my home. Same. But if you were to come in my home, there is a difference between dirty and messy. And I feel like we weren't really taught this and it wasn't expressed enough that you can be messy and not be dirty. You can have stuff everywhere. You can have exactly. piles everywhere and not be dirty because, and I think one of the times that I really, this is going to sound so weird, but by watching the show hoarding, that's kind of where it finally clicked that I was like, oh no, no, there is a difference between dirty and messy. And sometimes yeah. the two things hang out, Yeah, but a lot of times in my home, there are piles of stuff all around but none of it's like, it's not dirt. There's not like yeah. things rotting in corners for the yeah, most exactly. part. Now on occasion, Shit happens. there is a bowl I forgot that. that I brought into my bedroom because I hardly ever eat in my bedroom and that's yes. still a habit, but I hardly ever eat in there. So it's like, I forget it. So there's a, there's a difference between that. And we keep equating cleanliness with neatness and the two things don't necessarily yeah. go together. Like I bathe ver almost every day. I'm going to say almost every day. I bathe almost every day. I try to make sure that my dishes are like somewhat clean. I try to like put everything in the dishwasher. But if you came in here, it looks kind of like the bomb of all of my stuff went off. And it's just all here. Yeah. For object permanence reasons, there's a lot of stuff I keep out because I know I'm going to forget it. Like I put my beer can opener in the drawer that it goes in and, and then I couldn't find it. I took my, this highlighter, the collective cosmetics one, I, I rearranged things and put it, put it away. I thought I'd lost it. I couldn't find it yeah. for almost two days. And the only reason I couldn't find it is because I put it away and it had been sitting on like this desk of, junk and it was perfect there because yeah. i always knew where it was if the minute that i clean and start putting things away i'm like i'm never gonna find it again like deep yeah. in my soul i'm like i'm never gonna find it again and so it's like this battle i have of my piles of stuff and like like i like even when my mother comes over i get stressed about my mother coming over because i know she's going to say something about like all of the mess but i'm like but it's not like dirty but also <laughs> okay so and i'm 40. Like, this, this ties into all yes so another comment from defective shark ironically enough i have a hoarding problem now that i can directly trace to this experience as a child this is the thing is that so many of us have these issues now related to cleaning, to things, to stuff that I'm like, if parents would just, I say this out of love, keep their nose out of it, we could, we could learn on our own, both yeah. parents of 
grown adult children like in your situation and as children as parents with with young children and i realize there's a level of teaching responsibility and what's expected expected and all of that but i think that whole fine line of what is clean like uh messy versus dirty or unorganized versus uh unhygienic and yeah. also i feel like like so something that i think of which i don't know for fact but i think about like behaviors i had as a young young person as a kid and i'm like I was probably dealing with some kind of depression from a really young age, mm -hmm. but no, that was never considered. Yeah. And it was just, you're, you're lazy, you're messy, you're this, you're that. And it's like, like people, so many people have said, it's like, sometimes you think you can't, as an adult, it, like it's the same cycle where you can't get started. You can't get started. You don't have the energy and it's not priority because you know where shit is yourself. And it's all good. So it's like, I think about how many of us are still working on things now as adults in all ages. Well, and we're carrying all of this. Yeah, it's clutter. Exactly. It's clutter. It's not, it's not like you're living in a sea of trash. You, and I think about it, especially with kids where I'm like, it's their clothes on the bed. It's toys on the floor. Like, is it that big of a deal? So I am legit about to ask a very scary question for many of you. Prepare yourselves. Okay. How many of you have a closet that's filled to the brim with shit that you don't know what it is, but you're just used to putting everything away so no one can see it when they should visit your home? It's, it's the closet of, of death, basically. You're like, oh, everybody's coming. Put all the shit in the closet. Because you learn to do that as a child because it just had to get all up off the floor because company's coming. So you just shoved everything into the closet and then you shut the door as hard as you could so that all the stuff would stay inside and then you would vacuum. I mean, we, had, <laughs> we had that closet as kids. We had that closet as kids. <laughs> Why yes. would I not have it as an adult? Like, okay, okay. There's a whole Bridget. room. Me, Jared, right here. That's me. Not a closet, but at least two drawers. Laughter face me. <laughs> closet of death was my old life. Black hole cabinet. Avalanche closet. My room has that closet. The closet in the house haunts me. The closet of death. My mom did the same thing. Out of sight, out of mind. Yep. I'm wheezing. It was a staircase as a kid. My utility closet. <laughs> I mean, where does one put a large inflatable lobster? <laughs> a Zubumafu closet. Me. Me. I lived in that closet when Sorry. Oh. Uh, I can't even access it to this point. Drunk drawer. Yep. Uh, there are oh, all no, kinds have, of things you have the junk in drawer the closet. Too. What's even in there? The drawer of despair. I'm yes. working on that during this paralegal. <laughs> <laughs> also, hi, Maddie. Yeah. You you walked into us talking about the, the closet of death where you put everything in there because uh, you, this people are coming over. And then Erica has a great question. Has anyone else become extremely organized, border, bordering unhealthy because your parent had severe undiagnosed ADHD? I think that's a lot, a lot of us. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, I think a lot of people have parents who we suspect may have uh, ADHD because you just look at, like you look at you and then you're diagnosed and then you look at your parent and you're like, Hey, it had to come from somewhere. Do you, do you, see, okay. No, you, you don't see, oh. Okay, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. This is uh, it's me. I'm it's me. It, it's just me. It's okay. It's okay. It's, I I it's fine. But you see these behaviors, and it's just it's very interesting for us because we grow up, and we grow up with our drunk junk drawer, which you learn about very early. You learn about like just throwing all the shit into the drawer. Everyone has one. This is the first year. That I have lived with one, like, in, like, well, this is the first place that I've lived where my junk drawer truly has junk and 
No condiments. That's an amazing job. Look at that. No condiments. <laughs> but <laughs> like, let us clap. But like, you went from having the junk drawer to learning to like stuff everything in your closet. And we all know you had to use like all of your child strength to shut that closet door and make sure it stayed shut the entire time. Like you were like, like using super, like the way that you learned to like some of our dodge fast techniques come from that closet, from like shoving it in and being like, bam, and closing it before everything comes falling down on you and destroying your entire world. So. <laughs> and, so Carolyn makes a good point. I wonder how much of the bedroom and disaster it contained was undiagnosed ADHD. When I look back, I remember being completely overwhelmed by the prospect of cleaning my room. Same. And this is the kind of stuff that I've seen on TikTok where ADHD advocates or people with ADHD that are that are on TikTok are trying to help parents realize that like when they will see TikToks from parents talking about look at this mess I'm going to throw everything away I just keep trying to ask it's like if they're not diagnosed one it's highly underdiagnosed or ignored in women uh, so if that is the situation, you might need to get a second, third, fourth, fifth opinion, mm -hmm. because like the, the response I've seen from parents is like, oh, well, they're not, they're not diagnosed. It's like, yeah, your doctor is probably ignoring it. Might be, might be. Cause I don't know, allegedly, but <laughs> I think about that so much where I'm just like, there's so much that was in that cycle. Yeah, and I really like this. How is it my entire generation in my family are diagnosed with anxiety, bipolar, etc., but our parents had no issues? Yeah, right. Oh. And this is the thing. Okay, sorry, I just don't let that out. <laughs> yeah, because like, I relate. <laughs> our parents come from a generation of people that just you didn't go see head doctors or shrinks, no. as they put it. No. Like head, you don't see the head doctor, or the shrinks. You didn't see that because anyone who did was automatically. It was just. You, you the whole town knew because this is when people knew each other so the whole town knew that you saw like the only you know quack in town <laughs> and since everybody knew this you got labeled right so nobody went and we come like i'm from i'm born in 80 so i came from where like when they started recognizing more and more mental illness and recognizing that it doesn't like make you like, like there's not you're, you're not an oddity because yeah. your brain works the way that it works and i still hadn't and gotten this. diagnosed because and I didn't they think... don't think our mental illnesses exist exactly they claim so, that they don't have anything and they don't believe anything that we say that we're yeah. struggling with they'll just be like oh well you're just hyperactive or oh, well, you're just this and i'm like Okay. Oh, you just need to focus more and work harder. That's why Please you. Let me just get on that. Like I'm like, oh, it's not depression. You just need to get your shit in gear. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I had a knife, allegedly, that's all. I yeah, it's fill just, in the rest of the blanks. <laughs> it just it becomes a very stressful situation because I I will tell you. The freedom, like when I moved out, like I got divorced and I'm living by myself and I very quick, like I don't have furniture at this point in time. I just have like my bedroom. I have a little bit of bedroom furniture because I was living in a bedroom. So <laughs> now I've moved into a one bedroom apartment and I don't have furniture at the time. So I just have like, I kept all my boxes and this is another thing. I find a large number of people who are neurodiverse have boxes at least five, at least five boxes in your home that you have moved from place to place to place. Now, you open those boxes once in a blue moon, like once every so often you get in your cleaning frenzy and you go, oh, what's in this box? You open it, you're like, oh, and then you close it again. Now, why you don't take anything out of the box, no one knows. No one knows. It's no. probably something you don't need at this minute or whatever, but you just kind of look at it with a sort of blank expression. None of it made you, gave you any joy. You close back up. Then it's time to move. Those boxes are already packed. You move them. Yeah. You move these boxes from house to house to house to house. You don't know why. Y you have no clue 
why you keep moving this shit from place to place. You do have a clue. <laughs> it's because you don't want to give these things away because you've worked hard and spent your money and money. And most most of us probably in this chat are under the poverty level. level. If not most of us, I will say I am. And I feel like there's probably a lot of people watching. And I feel like, I think that's tied. There's that hoarder-ish mentality of like, but I spent my money on this, so I should keep it. Even though you haven't touched it in years. Like, and it's not that we know that every time we do that, but it's that like thing of like, but it's mine, I should I should keep it. And then you're like, yeah, but I don't actually ever use it. Yes, and that Stinky Eggs has a lot of cleaning trauma is also linked to poverty. I grew up with a single mom on welfare and the fear of someone seeing our messy apartment and calling CPS was a constant stressor. Yes, because <sighs> a lot of parents who grew up it like if your parent grew up in any form of poverty with their parents the house being immaculate was just like cuz i think sometimes we forget that there was once a time where teachers like went to parents homes to talk yeah. to them like other people came over for dinner you had like it, it's not like it is now where you have very specific people and especially when you're neurodivergent you have the ability to like just never have anyone at your house. You can go yep. to everyone else's houses. It's especially easy when you're single because when you are single, you can just be like, why would I have a barbecue at my apartment? <laughs> and you get out of doing all of the things. Yeah. So you just go to other people's houses. So it's very easy for you to avoid that. But there was a time when people really did go visit one another's houses unannounced. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The door unannounced. would just ring. And you would have to answer the door. Yeah, because they knew you, you couldn't were just home. ignore it like a freaking social. Yeah, you couldn't just go slinking like, like falling to the floor like the weirdo. <laughs> like literally, if my if someone were to knock on my door right now, I swear to you, I would just start being like, <laughs> I <laughs> would free. And I have done this. I am admitting my weirdness. I I have just since it, I will just freeze, and like not move barely breathe because like they can't they're, they're, they can't see me from my door where I'm sitting but like I must not make any noise yeah, I why must would you just come, sit like, here <laughs> I'm just like weird. just like completely like frozen we and all like, like we literally all become that squirrel like people who don't like people coming to their home we all become the squirrels and the rabbits like the wild rabbits like somebody like knocks on your door and you're like <laughs> you have to make an appointment with me in advance. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. But yeah, um, I mean, so with that being said, obviously your parents made sure that the house was clean, 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 <laughs> clean at all times because they'll be damned if somebody's going to come over to their home and think that they are like not only poor, but dirty. Yeah. And because so again, dirty is the worst thing you can be because you're lazy. And in this capitalist culture here in America, lazy is unproductive, which again is the worst thing that you could be, scum of the earth. Okay, I, I shall, I shall stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. And so we grow up, I think this has been passed down and passed down. And like now as an adult, I am desperately trying to find the the right balance for me of keeping things neat, but also not losing them. Cause people like, people give me wonderful suggestions on TikTok at times. They're like, oh, you can label the drawers or you can do this. And I'm like, listen, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get hyper focused on making these labels. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna make the labels. I'm never gonna use them. You're talking to somebody who spent hours, hours making envelopes. And like different little envelopes for coupons. And I clipped all the coupons and I separated them into all the little special envelopes. Okay. I got hyper focused on this project. And I was like, yes, bitch, I'm going to be a coupon and ass whore. Do you know what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. I cut out coupons upon coupons upon coupons and I separated them in all their little envelopes and I never took them to the store one time. Yeah. Not one time. So like, and I can't do that. Like that's not a lot yeah, of for me. No. So I'm working on ways to work with my object permanence and help myself 
Thank you. So Thorn said, said organiz it. organization tools never work for people with ADHD because we go full force on building the foundation and we never build the house on it. Mm -hmm. Perfectly said. Um, yeah, there is this, and I just, I wanted to quit like talking about tools, which I think we could definitely use some time to talk about whatever tools we have. I just wanted to like quickly say, I also still connotate cleaning as a task that has been pushed upon like women and in that old school way of like, these are the things that you're expected to do. You're expected to get married, have babies, clean the house. Cause that was my experience with it. And so as an adult, I'm like, I'm not that, I'm not that person. Fuck you and cleaning. And like, I'm like, I am, I am as old as I am. And I'm still dealing with this mindset that I don't believe in, but it makes me rebel against things that I never was able to rebel against as a kid, as a teenager, as a young adult. And so that's the other part of it. Like besides the ADHD, the depression, the the scarcity, poverty, all of those things, the trauma, there's that layer of it, which was a big part of the trauma where it's just like, no, this is what you have to do. You don't have a choice. You're 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 a girl. You have to do this. And it's yeah. like, but I but no. <laughs> okay. That's all. I just, uh, yeah. Gabby for Gabby said, I feel, that's how I feel with my drawers. I feel like they're all junk drawers. Does anyone have any tips? Okay. This is okay. going to sound so ridiculous. And I promise you, I'm not taking the piss because this is what I do. I just put the same kind of junk in a drawer. Like if, if it's like, um, do like dollars and change and like my nails, then they go in this drawer. Then they have like a bathroom drunk drawer. That's where the bathroom junk junk goes. I literally, like I had to start doing that because at least yeah. the junk is localized and I know what kind of junk to expect in this drawer. So when I am looking for something, I'm like, huh, I can't find my tweezers. They might be in the bathroom junk drawer. And then I just look in there and I know that that sounds, I swear to you, if I could actually pick up this webcam and take it over to you and be like, this is what I'm talking, I would, because I just kind of put the same type, like this is the kitchen living room junk. This is the junk. And it, I, that's how I've done it. And I just, I don't care. I don't even care about like having things in my cabinet be perfect. I literally, here's the thing. I love seaweed. I've, I've said this so many times. I'm like, I love seaweed. I love seaweed so much. Do you know what's happened since I put the seaweed away in a cabinet? I haven't eaten any. And I want it, like, I've been sitting here being like, ooh, seaweed would be nice. I forget that I have it until I open this this cabinet. So I'm taking it out of the cabinet today because I'm I'm annoyed because I want to be able to eat my seaweed. But I forget that it's there. Half the time, that's why I don't eat because I just forget that I have food. I, the the gifts, I, I people were kind. Thorn and others from LGG brought me turkey chili and my favorite chicken and sausage jambalaya. I forgot because I put it away when it was sitting on the floor in the box, which I was determined that I was going to throw away all my boxes. But when it was sitting on the floor on the box, I was like, Ooh, and I would grab a can and like make it. I, I, I put it all away. Cause I was like, look at me being good. Now I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So I literally have to like a thing that I have to start doing before I go to bed is taking out like a can of soup, a can of chili, pull out one of my ramen, like pull it, try to remember to pull these things out and put them on the counter so that I remind myself that A, I have food that I can eat and like B, these are my options. Like this is the world that I'm living in where I'm constantly running into these problems of things going into cabinets. Like my mother cannot understand why I put, put things, leftovers in the microwave. And she's always like, why do you put leftovers? In? I'm like, because I'm always gonna use the microwave. That's the one thing I know I'm always gonna use. So the second I open the microwave, I'm like, oh, Oh, well, instead of doing this, I'm going to eat these leftovers. I forgot that I ordered that this, like I ordered that earlier today. Yeah. There's, there's dinner. And then I re, uh, then I reheat it. And like, that's the way that, cause uh, if it goes in my fridge, it's going to die. Well, and it's not only going to die, it's going to grow something. It's going to yell at me. 
the first time you told me that, like, the first time we basically had this conversation about leftovers, I was just like, but I think it's also for me, like, logistically, that uh, one, I don't have a microwave, and two, like, that would not work. I just know myself. But anyway, I was like, wait, what? And then you explained it to me, and I was like, oh, okay. Like, it just, it made sense. It made sense because it made sense for you. Um, yeah. But I, I do think there is something about having things out. And I and I've realized that there's this there's this hard thing of balancing where if things are out, that can make it hard to focus if too many things are out. But I feel like there's also this weird thing that we have where no, everything should be put away and hidden away. But if it's your space and having it out is what helps you function, it's like all of the makeup I have on this desk. Like, yes, I have things in drawers, but I keep a lot of things out. I keep a lot of my single eyeshadow palettes out. I keep things in my kitchen out because I will use them. Like, it's like what you're talking about, about pulling out food to remember it. It's like, I have my skincare in locations where I see it. Because if I put it in a drawer or if I put it, like, I will just forget it. If it's not yeah. close to my computer or if it's not close to, like, an area that I spend a lot of my time, I will just ignore it. Yeah, I'm so like, what? <laughs> I, I'm kind of, like, I for me right now, I'm, like, I need to be able to function. The aesthetics of it, I don't, I, I can deal. I can deal yeah. with it. But... It's like if having the instant ramen that I bought sitting out on my kitchen cart or something or having something that I bought sitting out is what's going to remind me to eat, I'm going to have it sitting out um, and I will deal with the the aesthetics of it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I might be if able I'd... to show you. Let's see. Let's see. You mean like that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like a lot of the things that I like the most end up over here, back here, because like I will put things away sometimes back into the drawers, but a lot of times like I found my go-to foundations and concealers and things staying out. I found, like I said, my go-to single eyeshadows, like, but I understand that when it comes to focus, that sometimes that can be challenging. So I mm -hmm. think it's about finding like ways to balance basically finding organized clutter for yourself yeah and here's the thing there's nothing wrong with feeling like you know because i get that way too i have a lot of different clutters but there's clutter there's level of clutter that i don't mind and then there's the the what i like to what i affectionately call my depression nest because the clutter goes beyond like like things because a lot of my clutter is like things in places so yeah. it's just like like all of the things on my coffee table, it's like, oh, these all, all of this has to do with my gaming and editing software and doing nails. So like a lot of that, that stuff is just like on the coffee table. Sometimes there's, there's like fuzzy socks because I love fuzzy socks and I just have them near my coffee table or on it because I don't, I don't eat on my coffee table. I just, I just eat wherever I eat, but yeah. I have them there. I don't even care. Who cares? They're my feet. And I put them there because I know that my toes might get cold and I cannot put them if I put them on in the middle of the top middle of the coffee table, Bo can't get a hold of them and chew them. But I want them to be there because otherwise he'll take one and just like fuck off with it. And then I'm sitting there being like, my feet are cold and I want to put it on. Like that's another thing that I'm trying, like that I do for myself is like put this right here where you can see it. So when your feet get cold, you're not sitting there for a good two hours with cold toes. Yep. And then they're so cold that you have to go take the hot shower because now you can't get your toes to be warm and comfortable. So it's like these these things you it's like I doing to like make myself exactly, feel good <laughs> like near my work I always have either my favorite lip balm or a couple I've been trying to keep my fingerless gloves over here because my hands will get cold I also keep my notebook that I use and extra pens right by me because I put this in a drawer it's useless. And this yeah. is actually, I don't know if I haven't really figured out for cleaning purposes, but I will say if you're struggling in, like I actually find writing things down beyond having them in the computer and your phone. And for me, writing things down and being able to go and look at a list and cross things off mm -hmm. is hugely helpful. So when I have mistakenly tucked this away somewhere, 
I'm fucked. It's use. It's useless. And I think yeah. we're we're. I just wanted to say, I, I the comment about why do we have to hide things? It's totally aesthetic presentation. This is what rich houses look like. Rich houses look like there is nothing. Everything is hidden yes. away. Clean countertops. Everything is sparkly. You are rich enough to have somebody that's taking care of your house, putting things away, cleaning off surfaces. So that is this desired aesthetic. And yeah. that is what we're taught to like and want. And that literally every right. television show, yes. every reality show with rich people where it's like the real housewives of whatever, every, every almost every TV show shows a non-functional house. That's a, I'm going to call it that. I'm going to yeah, call it a non-functional non house. It's a non Because like, it, it looks like no one lives there. And yeah. I, that's weird to me. I'm just like, I wouldn't want to live in this like really sterile space where like, uh, like you were saying, if you, if you want your house if you put your design your house all in white just tell me you didn't want me to come like that was what you said emily yes just tell me if you, you didn't wear want me all to come. white if your house <laughs> is all white i'm just like oh we're not gonna get along because even if you're wearing all white i'm like you can't get too close to me because i'm a mess and i will spill something on you also yeah. um i don't know if you saw this Audrey made a TikTok about this. So Liz said, do you all forget to take the laundry out of your washer? So then you have to wash them again. You have a whole laundry series. Yes. Ish. So um, first of all, if you forget to take laundry out of the washer and it gets smelly, you have to dry it. You have to put it in the dryer, put it in the dryer with the dryer sheet, let it get dry, then rewash it. That is the only way you're going to get the weird, funky smell out of it. If you don't do that, yeah. you're going to dry. Like if you try to just rewash it, because like that smell is from the moisture. So if you just try to rewash it, you're just re-moistening it and like it doesn't come out. So you have to dry it and then go rewash it and then the smell will come out. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's the, uh, I've learned that lesson. So, <laughs> um, and I'm not going to find the comment, but I wanted to just uh, like, to kind of say so Alex sincerely Alex in the chat earlier came in a little late but was saying how like they also feel like there's this weird the punishment part of it that's not just it's punishment but it's like you couldn't do anything else with your day until yes. all of the cleaning was done yes. you couldn't socialize you couldn't do this you couldn't do that you couldn't just read a book and so I find that, that ties into something I struggle with, which is also that cycle where I'm like, okay, but I have to do this thing. I have, and I do this with work too. Mm -hmm. I have to do this work. Oh, I'm struggling. I can't focus. I can't do it. I'm not inspired. If it's cleaning, if it's whatever. And I sit in this, like, I, I'm like frozen because I don't want to do anything enjoyable because I haven't earned it. Uh, Cause I'm supposed to do this thing. And, but I can't get myself together to do the thing. So it's just, I'm just like, oh, I, I, I've wasted like weeks because of this issue, like between how stuff works stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, you don't have to, you, you don't have to earn pleasure. That's what I you wanted know. to say. Like, you don't have to cycle into the capitalism productivity bullshit of like, well, I have to earn having a decent day. Like you, you don't have to do that. We had to do it as kids. We don't have to do it as adults. And so we'll give you like a couple of um, things that have helped me as I'm continuing, like this is an ongoing process as, as I'm continuing to like work through how to clean without feeling like it is, an, is it's a chore and it's a nightmare. One, I've really been setting myself up to be like, don't do this for longer than 30 minutes. Just don't. 30 minutes is good. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't do this for longer than 30 minutes because... I have found like, yes, do I like having a clean space? Yes, but guess what? It doesn't have to be the entire space. I actually am so happy with the like, that I cleaned up this area yesterday while I was on like doing my little live stream and I was so happy and I'm so happy. I walked by, I'm like, look at you, boo, looking clean. Okay. And then like- <laughs> I did that the other day. I had a basket, it's, it's, it has stuff in it now that's not related, but I had a basket of just like makeup stuff that had gathered and I finally put it away, whether that meant just putting it in certain drawers or putting it in cups out here. But like I divided it up and put it into its new homes. And I was like, oh, OK. And that yeah. probably took me a half hour because of the speed in which I work. And I'm OK with that. So I'm seconding that. Sorry. Yeah. 
and get used yeah. to patting yourself on the back. It's going to feel weird at first because at first you're going to look and be like, I didn't even do anything. Like when you, if you cleaned your toilet, which is actually a very difficult task for me because I put the stuff in there and then I fucking forget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, Oh, you like, you gotta let it soak. So I've yeah. switched cleaners that you don't need to let soak. I just, I, and like, I won't even, I don't even care anymore. I'm just like, I'm cleaning it yeah. now. I'm cleaning yeah. it now. But I, re I, I, like, if I don't clean my whole bathroom, but I clean the toilet, I'm like, yay. And every time I yep. go to the bathroom, I'm like, look at the clean toilet, like, go you. I'm rewarding myself every time and cheering myself on to remove as much of the stigma of like, you didn't do enough or everything's not clean and everything's yeah. not perfect. I, I just, I can't do that. That's not going to be my life. That's okay. Yeah. And as I'm not really ever going to have a romantic partner, as far as I can tell, I'm content to like live in my like meat piles life. Yeah. And I don't like, and I don't, I mean, I don't know anybody who would, uh, if that would be weird for me. Please don't uh, fall in love with me, anybody. That would be weird. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Don't fall in love with me. Uh, that would make me feel very awkward. You would want to spend time with me that I don't necessarily want to spend with you. No, what I was uh, going to say is what would be weirder is if I see you fall in love. Okay. Me? Yeah. Oh. Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> what a bum. <laughs> Between the two of us, I feel like... <laughs> We are just a ripe pair <laughs> yeah, it's when it just, comes to like love and relationships and all of that. Yeah. Um, pat yourself on the back. Give yourself grace. Stop comparing yourself to unrealistic ideals of cleanliness that don't involve actual humans. Okay. Because when you see these shows on like these t houses on TV, please keep in mind that there's like a crew of people making this app. Listen, if I like hundreds of people, said, even depending on the house. Yeah. I, I love it. even said like having people clean in my space gives me anxiety. Me too. That's why I would want, I'd be like, how exactly long does it take you? Like if I could afford to have someone come in. That's the and first like, thing I would put money I towards. would. And let me just tell you, I'd be like, exactly how long is it going to take you? Because I will leave this house. For how oh, I would just takes. say, please text me when you've locked up. They would have a, I would think they would have a key or whatever, and then I would know. But I just, I just want to say, I love how Erica said, I have to remind myself that gassing myself up for the small wins is more productive than sharding on myself for not doing enough. Facts. It was how you said it. It was how you said it. Yes. So, <laughs> and it's like it's the okay. So like sometimes. I will just be like, there'll be one thing that always annoys me. I'm like the one thing, like the one box. Like I, I do, I do have trouble getting boxed up, but like there's sometimes the one box that I'm like, oh, you're just so big. I need to, and then I'm just like, just take it out. You don't have to take them all out. Just take the one yep. thing. Like, or there's the one thing. If it's, if it's just one thing, if it's reorganizing your skincare because it, it's a mess and it, it's something you try to do every day and it bothers you every day. Like just let yourself be good with just doing that one thing because yes. it is progress and you don't have to be infiltrated by this mindset that yes, that, that like rich, rich people have and, and the media have cultivated that like everything should be spotless and perfect and that it's a big project. Cause I also think about media tying into this, like those big, like those shows, like trading spaces and all the house shows where they come in and do all of this stuff at one time. And yeah. I know that's not always cleaning, but that's redecorating, reorganizing and all of mm -hmm. that. And I'm like, yes, but how many humans are doing that? You're one well, that's person. why I don't like the whole Marie Kondo thing. Sorry, I'm going to say it out that's, loud. That's, that's why I don't true. like it. Yeah, I don't yeah. like it because it's like this idea that you wander around your house all day going like, does this give me joy? Like, bitch, I don't know. I didn't see it yesterday. Yeah. Do you know the amount of times I walk by and I'm looking for something and I like I literally have to like walk the same and look four times in the same space because my eyes 
just won't see it there because it's normally not there. Like my keys, for instance, I'm constantly losing if I don't always have them in one of my pockets, which is about to be a problem because now, you know, spring, summer is coming for Texas, which means I'm going to constantly be trying to find my keys. And I know people are like, you can get the little thing and you, and you hit the little BB thing and it'll tell you where your keys are. Not if I lose the remote thing, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna. But there's remotes Listen. on your, there's remotes on your phone. There's That's things true. where it's an app on your phone. That's I will true. say that. There I do is use my phone, though. <laughs> there there are small if you have the money to to do it, there are little things out there technologically related that can help with with this yeah. kind of stuff, but that's also with the privilege of being able to spend that money. Um also, I want to say if there is a special drawer in your apartment or a special whatever in your in your space that you don't want a like somebody that's cleaning your house to find or go in, you just tell them. Yeah. It's like any real. It's like any. You're paying them. I. I'm sorry. I. I just I, people that I, and I'm. This is not an attack for anybody that feels this way. But there's this like. Oh, but I. It's a boundary. You can set a boundary. That's really what I'm saying. Like you can say this is a boundary. Like I put an X on drawers that you don't need to go into. <laughs> so that's <laughs> yeah. that's also part of it. Where it's like whether. And it's let a me boundary, just tell you. Most yeah. of them do not want to open your special thing store. By exactly. They really don't. Can I've you known tell people them who have cleaned houses for a living. They really wish that people would tell them not to open. Like, please don't yes. open the third drawer. And they're like, okay. That's what they, I'm saying. It's like, that. yeah, I've also heard <laughs> people that have cleaned either in like restaurants and businesses or otherwise where they found things where you're like, you could have just told me not to go in that space. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, because they're like, <laughs> I didn't want to see that. I didn't like because now I'm gonna if I see your face, like if, if you're walking that. in as I'm walking out, like yeah. this is what I have to think about. They don't want like most people don't want to think about the freaky things that you're doing. That's this is a fact. Like most of us yeah. don't want to think about the freaky things that people we like even know are doing. You just don't want to know, um, Liz. The amount of times that I've had breakdowns over things that I couldn't find over like just, and the worst of it is the majority of it is staring me in my face 99% of the time. Like I have had fits being like, I cannot believe I can't find my eye drops for the live stream. And like, I will have two of these sitting right here the entire time I was live streaming. And I'm just like, was beside myself. That I and that's also them. why a lot of times we own multiples of, of the same thing. And a lot of times we beat ourselves up because we'll start cleaning and find the multiples and be like, why did I need 15 lip balms? And it's like, because guess what? I lose them all the time and then I buy yeah. more. Like, <laughs> y'all yeah. in the chat have just been like amazing both like you on really fire been. and so sincere and so open and uh, <laughs> like the whole <laughs> like the levity just tell me what room has the sex swing so i can dust around it yes. um i i See, think said it <laughs> yes i was a house cleaner once and i'll have been so much happier if they told me i swear i'm not curious i don't want to know yeah exactly be so surprised like how I think people think that people are curious and yeah, like, do we want no, to see point. if you have like uh, diarrhea problems? Sure. That's a good time. Opening up a medicine cabinet and being like, what's going on with you? But okay. you know what I don't want to know about is your freaky thick life. But I here, don't <laughs> want to know ever. Here's what I think actually <sighs> is that we are nosy humans. We're nosy yeah. about people in our life and about strangers. When you do it for work, you don't give a fuck. You just mm. want to do the work and get out because yeah. the longer you're there, the longer it is for you. Like it's just, even if you're booking by the hour, poking around in someone's medicine cabinets, it, you you're you're in you're going to people's houses and cleaning them. Like you just want to get in and get out. It's like everyone that doesn't do something for a living is always like, oh my god, what if this happened? It's like you just move on past it. Like yeah, it's, it's not a big deal. So yeah, so exactly. Like, yeah. Well, Unless you're interested the in the person. neurodivergent live stream space. Uh, <laughs> yes, I just want to leave y'all with this. I I want y'all to be kind to yourselves. Okay, because I know that it's hard. 
I know that it can be very stressful. I know that you can beat yourself into the ground for the smallest things. It's not the end of the world. You are not worthless. You are not a piece of shit. You're not dirty. You're not gross. There's nothing wrong with you. You will do things in your own time, just like I do. And everything is going to work out the way that it's going to work out. And if anybody in your life doesn't understand that, tell them to fuck right off because you don't need that. You already have more than enough going exactly. on. Exactly. In your in set your mind every single day. It is time to set boundaries and just tell people fuck right off. You don't have to let anybody come into your house if you don't want to. No. If you never feel ready for someone to come into your house, don't worry about it. You are okay. <laughs> it's Take your, your time. You deserve your privacy. That's another thing that I feel like from childhood, a lot of us didn't get. You deserve your privacy and you do. You deserve to take better care of yourself every day. Better Take care of yourself today better than you did yesterday and just continue to do that because yeah. everyone that I know deserves better for them, themselves. And just watch out for your junk closet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Be careful opening that up, all right? <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Before I get any more emotional, I just wanted to thank all of you for sharing and being so kind. And everybody, I just, I don't know. I, the response has been wonderful. Um, we'll be hanging out on Emily's channel on Thursday. Yes. Hopefully there will be no tears for me this time. I, I sucked them back up into my eyes. There's cotton from... Uh, King of the Hill call it the pain water. I sucked it back <laughs> to the past because the pain water was stressing me. But I, I really just appreciate that y'all come here and you have open minds and you're always so kind. And um, yeah, that's it. Until next time. XOXO. <laughs> Gotha girl. <laughs>